Hey, good morning. Hey, I want to talk about the safe handling of uh, lathe chucks. And uh, you can damage the machine and damage yourself with them. But uh, lathe chucks like this uh, four inch one on the uh, super lathe here. Oh, uh, by the way, I'd like to say congratulations to Will the Blade and uh, Corey uh, that both got uh, super machines going now. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun for you. They're a lot of fun. So uh, this truck here is pretty easy to handle. I got to clean this up. I uh, made the parts I needed for the apron on that old axle son. And uh, I'm going to get another one uh, in here, too. Uh, I'd like to get uh, one of the older works in a drawer, tube drives, and totally destroy, uh, restore it instead of destroy it like others do. Okay, now I'm going to talk some serious Chuck stuff here, okay? Now, over here, I'll show you this. I'll move that right now. Now, look at this. I was looking at that. I think you can see that okay. I'll kind of move it. See all those dings? I count about 25 of them. So over, I don't know, 82 years or so. And here's some jaw marks right there. Maybe it got dropped with the jaw sticking out. But uh, so dropping... Um, the chuck on the waist has become a tradition. <laughs> and you really don't want to do that. And you can get injured with these chucks and stuff. Like this thing here is, is just monstrous uh, heavy for a 12, 12 inch wrench, it's 12 and a half inches. If it's uh, um, almost eight inches out there from the tip of the jaws to the back plate. <laughs> Here, yeah, the direct mount uh, chuck is uh, oh, about three inches shorter, but uh, you, you don't have to worry about an axle running a chuck like this. It won't cause no damage because uh, the the dual Temkin um, there's actually four Temkin bearings in this thing, and it's rated for over thirty thousand pounds. Uh, radial load, some 11,000 pounds axle. So <laughs> this is not going to do it. The only limiting factor is this is a five horsepower machine, but I'm sure it'll run it at, uh, uh, at that 308, no problem, because that's in the low range. And the machine's got a tremendous, scary amount of power in uh, low range. Now, you know those uh, other lathes like the Cadillacs and, uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, the Hercules Ajax, I remember, they have no more than eight speeds. A lot of them are just six six spindle speed but you can do an awful lot with that you know but these this older school machines like this one and the Lodge and Shipley power turn I, I showed a photo of uh, it, it also has a 24 speed headstock and um, I think the Americans are 18 speed um, so these older machines have a lot of speeds because they needed them I guess okay well I'm going to show you uh uh, a better way to handle chucks and talk about that. Okay, I want to put it on a tripod here. Now I think that'll work. Let me see if you can see what I see. Uh, uh, right about there somewhere, huh? Okay. So, the best thing to do is to make a sled. And if, if you... Uh, you can make something out of plywood, put some stuff on it, and have it on the on the ways, put a couple of wood wedges. I don't know if I got anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, a little wood, couple of wood wedges, and you can cradle the chuck. But I I uh, laminated a couple of boards together here and uh, come up with this. And then the, the mating part I can use to uh, for a couple of chucks in another way. So this slides right under there, see? Now let's see how easy it is to take that off. Okay, we are number six. I will take it off. 
I hope you're all doing well today. It's still kind of cold out here in Walla Walla. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to smash your fingers with these. And, you know, there's no way to have an overhead uh, crane kind of thing here. And like the uh, engine lifts, um, those are just awful for uh, trying to stab a chuck in. Looks like I got it. So if you have to use an engine lift, and I can use that in here, but I'm using a lift table to get the chuck up to, to this level. I have to store the chucks on the floor. So the chuck comes off this easy, so it's still heavy. Like that. So you can take uh, like an engine lift and bring it over and drop it on the sled rather than trying to stab it in here where you're gonna smash your fingers and bang stuff up, okay? So you wanna set it on a sled then you can put it in just this easy. It's, this is still a heavy, heavy chuck. See? It's that easy. So, and <laughs> it's really nice to have something like this if you want to adjust the pens. You know, <laughs> things like that become a real hassle um, unless you have something like this. So you can fabricate something like this, you know, out of wood and some wedges and stuff. But that's what I did there. And that, that's pretty good. So I'm still kicking around. I'm almost done with the chuck uh, adapting. Now I'm gonna get into some jaw grinding and I gotta build a, a device to uh, load the jaws. Um, I was going to say about that. I, I keep uh, trying to get to that point, but I keep getting delayed by other things going wrong, like the, the apron clutches and this, which are working great now. Everything's really good with this machine, except it makes a racket. Um, th these old gear uh, machines like this in the Brown and Sharp uh, mill are really quite loud. Uh, well, anyway, I, I guess I'll have to get a microphone or something. Or, uh, I don't know, cone of silence. <laughs> but things are looking pretty good in here. I, uh, I'll get the camera loose again. Um, I've got everything leveled. And, uh, got the jig borer leveled, got stuff piled up. I, I got to do some tool storage over here for the, the milling machine and uh, something over here for the jig borer. And I think I'll be good to go. I hope so. All right. That's what it's looking like. I kind of like the arrangement and um, the cutter grinder here I don't know why I can't get rid of this uh, little drill press, but I find it kind of handy. Um, I can get clear around it. And uh, it's really, like these whole cutter grinders like this, you operate them from behind, you operate them from the front. So I should be able to get around it okay and uh, be able to do some videos. Because I've got a lot of work to do with this old cutter grinder. Okay. Hey, well, I'm going to um, dink around here. I'm looking for some pieces to make the, the, the device for uh, loading the jaws. And then i got to fit my tool post grinder uh, to this axle. Set. So I'll get busy with those things. And uh, I hope you guys are having a good time in your shop, too. Okay. Have a good day.